my friends it's your old pal Jordan the Lion and your old pal Ja we're making our way through the back roads of Pennsylvania again today headed back towards Pittsburgh because we have a friend flying in at the airport to uh, participate in a couple of vlogs with us and do some traveling for the next couple of days and we got to get there to pick him up so days with Jordan the Lion Ja and our mystery friend begin now Check out the train traveling through the trees and the mountains. All right, we're getting close. There's our sign for Pittsburgh. To Clemente again. Are you excited because you know who we're going to pick up? Who are we going to pick up? You want a drink? All right, any guesses as to who's coming? Who we're picking up? How's it going? They're coming for you, Barbara. <laughs> So what you might have gathered from our title is that today we are doing the filming locations of George A. Romero's Night of the Living Dead. This should be a blast. We're headed to Evans City. So here we are out here on the road that Johnny and Barbara are taking to go visit their mother's brother out at the cemetery. They're complaining about having to go three hours each way for a five minute visit. You can see this landscape has changed a little bit, but you can see that bridge right there and even some of the houses up there on top of the hill all matches up. I don't know why we have to waste an entire day coming out here, spending three hours one way, three hours back just to stop for five minutes. Johnny, it's one day a year. <laughs> Well, we made it. We finally made it to the home of Night of the Living Dead. I love this movie. We're gonna go out to the cemetery today and try and match up as many of the shots as we can. Since Scott's along, he's gonna be acting out in this and this should be a lot of fun. Um, I'll tell you some of the background stories to how they film this. And there actually used to be a Living Dead Museum here in town, but it closed up and it's actually moved to the Monroeville Mall. So we'll vlog that in the next vlog. Now this is cool. This says, adding to the Night of the Living Dead's direct cinema approach, the filmmakers cast their motion picture using family, friends, and colleagues within the local community. Longtime Evan City residents Philip and Ella Mae Smith, Randy Burr, and Dick Heckard were each cast in featured roles giving the film its regional flavor. This tremendous community effort, which saw professional radio and television announcers portraying newscasters, Pittsburgh police officer com comprising a ghoul hunting posse, and ordinary next door neighbors stumbling through the darkness as the, as the movie's iconic flesh eaters impart Night of the Living Dead with a heightened sense of realism. As the forerunner of the modern zombie genre, this film has consequently inspired countless imitators, such as Evil Dead, 28 Days Later, World War Z, and The Walking Dead. But for now, let's go out to this church in this cemetery, the Evans City Cemetery. Here was the former location of the Living Dead Museum and Gift Shop. Unfortunately, I think because of COVID, they had to move, so this was the original location. But we'll see it next vlog, don't worry. Because actually, the weekend that we're here is not a Living Dead weekend, so. So here's our shot of the car coming towards us, the brother and sister 
coming towards us and making that sharp right turn up this hill into Evans Cemetery, Evans City Cemetery, and we will take the exact drive they took and give you their point of view. So cool to be here. So right now we're taking the same road that Johnny and Barbara took to make that sharp right that I just showed you into the cemetery. Get their perspective. It's right after this sharp bend. And even though we see the end of this scene as her car coming down this hill, I'll show you how they cheated that and faked it. So the casting of this scene is pretty interesting because Russell Striner is the guy who played Johnny. He was actually part of George Romero's um, production crew, but he was part of the owners of the production company. and. What they actually were doing to make a living was they were making commercials and this was a passion project they wanted to do so they had to film the movie in two sections and so um, they would do film one section of like 15 days then go work for their clients and then come back and film again. So Russ Streiner said that when they were going to do all the production casting and everything they were just so worried about the farmhouse scenes that they completely didn't really care about the cemetery so when it came time to shoot the cemetery scene he just kind of got thrown in there and the car they used was his actual grandmother's car and they said that they shot up in the cemetery for two separate days and in between that time someone hit his grandmother's car on the driver's side and so they wrote in that when the zombies chasing uh, Barbara away and she pulls the emergency brake and everything that she would careen into the side of that tree to explain the dent in the side of the car. So when they come into the cemetery we see them take the right turn here and go down this drive. The way you can tell is because of that marker with the ball on top of it. They drive right past that. So then we see their car rolling towards us down this hill towards the church and it stops right in front of the church when they start walking up this way and then our next shot is just turned right over here and we see this chapel in the background of both of them. So then we have this shot as they're walking through the cemetery and it looks a little bit different because all of those big trees that created the canopies over their head while they talked are gone. But you can match up these two headstones right here. And if you look in the background at that one, that tree wasn't there, but you can see that headstone right there as they're walking towards us. And then you see this shot as they're wandering through. There used to be two bushes over there, but you can see this headstone right here in front. And then the two off to the left are over there as they're walking down here to their relative's grave. So then they walk down here and the headstone that they're looking at is right here in front of us. That's when Barbara kneels down and He's making a comment about you already went to church and he's putting the cross down here saying, you know, a little spit and polish and they could clean this up and resell it next year. But if you're wondering whose headstone they're actually looking at, it is Grace and George Cole. So she would have been looking at that right there. 
So while Barbara is down here kneeling and saying a prayer, and he makes that comment about church was this morning, he's actually putting on his driving gloves, and you see him put these on earlier, then you see him take them off, and then he puts them on here. The actor, Russ, said that he did it on purpose because he said he wanted something identifiable for the character when Johnny comes back later because he has the keys and he's basically a zombie. He wanted that to be a thing when you saw the gloves that you would know that that was Johnny because he said otherwise I just had glasses and basically, you know, that was it. But you can see this whole shot, even the name is Blair, but you can only see part of it in the shot. And of course, like I said, a lot of trees were removed in this cemetery. The whole foliage and everything has changed. And right here's the shot we have of when Johnny's putting his gloves on and he tells Barbara, remember when I scared you when we were kids? Grandpa said, you'll be damned to hell. Happens right there. And then Johnny says, they're coming to get you, Barbara. Then we see her pop out from right behind here. And then Johnny comes from in front of the headstone right around the Blair headstone. So then we have the shot of Johnny saying, look, there's one of them right now. And you see him walk around this headstone and he's right there in the middle of those two. The quote unquote zombie. So after Johnny says, I'm getting out of here, Barbara, he runs away and she's walking down this way. And just as she's coming right through here. So he attacks her right here because as you see them struggling, you can see this headstone that used to have a triangle on top. You can see that in the shot as they're, as he's like trying to attack her. And then Johnny runs over and Johnny and the zombie start fighting. And when, when Johnny gets thrown down, he hits his head right here on this headstone, which is Clyde Lewis Myers. And you hear a big thud. They said they just made that sound with a, a watermelon in post-production, but that happens right there where he falls. And then our very next shot is Barbara gripping this stone. She has her hand right here and she's hovering around that exact Nicholas Kramer headstone. And then the zombie is getting up right here, looking towards us to attack Barbara. Then there used to be a tree right here, and he would have come in between the tree and this headstone. The tree would have split right there, and the uh, zombie would have been coming up right there. So once she's being chased by the zombies, she's coming towards us and you can see, even though the landscaping's changed, you can see this Lucas headstone right there. That's where she falls right here. And then the camera ends up turning around to a turnaround shot basically. So right here, she would have been laying basically right in front of us, but with the telescopic lens, this Drexel headstone wasn't there at the time. You can match it up because the one right behind Amy Rex is in the shot. You can actually see that one in the shot, but it looks closer to the camera because of the, the lens they're using. And you can see the, the chapel in the background right there as well. So she's got the shoe off laying on the ground right here. Then she gets up, comes running towards us to jump in the car. And we see all this through the inside of the car, looking out the driver's side window so she's hopping in the driver's side so we have her looking out the driver's side window and that zombie is trying to get in he's banging on this glass repeatedly banging on it with his hands trying to get in and then he goes around the back of the car and he goes over to the passenger side where the chapel is and he grabs a rock and he'd be smashing out the window so he grabs that rock right in between the tree and the chapel. It's so cool to see the chapel is completely unchanged. I know that they've uh, they've like refurbished it a little bit. I think they've replaced those pillars, but it looks so similar that you'd never even notice. So right here, she pops the brake and starts coasting down the hill here where it turns. 
and the whole time he's like trying to get in the passenger side door and everything as they come down here and then we see her car coast right down this hill and we see him staggering down the hill after her now here's where the movie magic takes place you would think that they would just film her coasting down this hill but there's a pretty heavy curve down there so they didn't do that actually found someone in the production saying that how they filmed it was they actually took the car up there and they had it crash into a tree up there so since i mentioned the car had been wrecked by his someone hitting his grandmother they brought it up here told uh, the actress playing barbara to just glide the car as close to into the tree as they could so that's what she does causing no extra damage but in the shot it does look like that that she's hit the side of the tree so that's how they cheated that so even though the farmhouse isn't there anymore so much of the movie takes place and is centered around the farmhouse that i think we should go out and at least see where it used to be so let's go so if she really were careening out of control it would have been down this way and they said when they filmed it, they actually didn't have the engine running or anything. They did just pull the emergency brake and let it coast. Couldn't really figure out where she's running, what road that they filmed that on. And in fact, we found an interview with the cast and they didn't really even answer it then. So this is leading us out to the farmhouse. So when we see Barbara doing that big run down the road, George Romero was actually in the trunk of his car with a camera. That's how they film that. And then they end up, she ends up coming out right here and where you see that kind of log cabin house, that's where the white farmhouse was that's been destroyed. It's been bulldozed and everything, but that's where the farmhouse that the rest of the movie takes place in, where she meets all the other people that are hiding out in there and finds the gas pump and everything. Ah, oh, so, so cool to see this. I mean, even though the house isn't there, just to see where they would have filmed. I love it. This movie freaked me out when I was a kid. So neat. Well, my friends, we're gonna call it a day. I had so much fun today. I think Scott had a lot of fun too because when I invited him to come out here, he actually said, I've always wanted to see the Night of the Living Dead filming locations and in fact one time many many years ago I went to Pittsburgh and hit up just about every cemetery I could find trying to figure out which cemetery it was so he finally got to see it today too my dad when he was alive he passed away when I was eight years old and he turned me on to horror movies originally and this one in particular so I just kept thinking how much I think he would have loved to have been along and seen this too so this was a real honor to get to see all these it was so much fun and I hope if you're anywhere near this place, Evans City, Pennsylvania, you'll make time to come and visit the filming locations and the cemetery from Night of the Living Dead. They're coming to get you, Barbara. Good night.